Alright, welcome back to the shop. So today we're going to be talking about casting wood with acrylic, kind of a hybrid mixture. So uh, first thing I want to do is kind of talk about uh, some of these weird materials and how I harvest it, I guess. This is mountain mahogany. I, I go get this stuff when I'm hiking uh, a lot of times. I live up near Tahoe and uh, there's, there's a lot of kind of weird bushes and tree type things around here. Manzanita is another one that I really like using. So I'll just go and I'll cut some off or if it's you know laying dead, if there's branches or something like that, I'll just uh, kind of cut it up into manageable sizes and uh, cart it home. Uh, once I get it home, what I usually try to do is get some of the bark off maybe, uh, especially with the sagebrush, I'll, I'll definitely strip all the bark off. So this is just the internal kind of wood structure of the trunk or the stalk or the branches of sagebrush. Um, once I do that, I'll, I'll cut it up on the bandsaw. Um, you could do this, you can break a lot of it really, but it's just easier to kind of, I can get pretty similar sizes. Uh, that basically fit in these molds by just running it through the bandsaw real quick. Um, from there, I want to make sure if, if, if I've cut it off of a live bush or a tree or whatever, I'm going to let it sit for weeks probably. But uh, some of this dead stuff that I've, that I've just picked up off the, the ground basically, it's pretty dry in the first place. So I'll let it sit maybe a week, just kind of get rid of some of the residual exterior humidity. Uh, levels, you know, moisture levels that are in it. Uh, prior to, uh, I'm going to stabilize all of this stuff. I, I just, I think that stabilizing any wood material is a better bet and you're going to get better results casting with it. Um, Alumilite really doesn't like water. <clears throat> I haven't really seen what results <laughs> you get from trying to put water or something in there, but I even know some of the heavily water-based dyes will just ruin a batch I guess uh, so I just I haven't even tried messing with that stuff I try to use really dry wood or whatever I'm you know using I use the alumilite dyes because they're they work with them for sure um, so from there I'll cook it in my little toaster oven uh, you know after I've let it sit and it's and I'm getting ready to stabilize it prior to stabilizing I'll cook it in the toaster oven at about 150 I think is what the temperature is something like that not too high just you know, get it hot and I'll let it go in there for about 30 minutes, maybe an hour, something like that. <clears throat> Pull those things out. And, and, and that's really just to, to give one last effort of sucking as much moisture out as possible. Now, I know some people will tell you to, uh, you know, cook it overnight. I just, I don't really want to waste the energy or time doing that. So I haven't really gotten any bad results doing it my way. So, uh, use your own discretion the best way to do it is get all the moisture out as possible you know like zero percent is what the optimal would be <clears throat> i get it close enough and it works um now i'll stabilize it using i, I use the turn text you know stabilizing uh, chamber i like that one because it's see-through it's a piece of clear pvc uh there's other you know st stabilizing vacuum chambers on the market uh, I know Stickfast is making them now. Um, I'm sure they work great. I just, I really like the clear. <laughs> I like being able to see what's going on in there. So <clears throat> that's why I use uh, Curtis Seebeck stuff. It's over at turntext.com. That's where I get it from. Uh, and I also just use his stabilizing uh, resin uh, as well, just because why not? I don't know. There, I think there are some different formulations. I know the Stickfast has their own and there's other ones out there. I just, I started using the cactus juice and it works, so I just keep using it. Um, not to say that there isn't, you're not going to get good results using any other brand, but uh, that's what I use. So, uh, after it's been stabilized, it'll be in this, these are stabilized pieces of mountain mahogany. Then all I do is I drop it in the, the casting mold, mix my resin, and uh, let it, you know, cook in the pressure pot. Um, I'm not going to cover all the casting and show all that stuff. I've done that in other videos, the the two previous casting videos with the clear and the, the white alumilite. I cover in depth, you know, step by step how I do the mixing and all that kind of stuff, adding dyes in the white one. Uh, I kind of skim over a little bit of that in the clear one and talk more about the clear, you know, once you've gotten it uh, hardened, you know, and, and cured then what, what do you expect with the clear stuff? Uh, and so I'm going to skip that in this one, and I'm just going to go to, once this is done and cut up, uh, I really just kind of want to talk about what kind of results uh, you can expect from doing, <laughs> throw, you know, throwing crazy junk wood or, or other objects in a mold and then pouring resin around it. Um, 
Now you don't have to go get sagebrush or weird stuff. I just, I think that's pretty cool to be able to use local materials and especially like unique and weird materials. I, I just, I think that that kind of, you know, I don't know too many people making pens out of sagebrush or, you know, even using sagebrush at all or mountain mahogany for anything. Um, but uh, you can use all kinds of stuff. I, I use, uh, you know, this is a piece of maple burl. It's just got a void here where there's like a knot or something like that. Uh, here's another piece. It's got some serious valleys. The beauty of this is a lot of times these kind of messed up wood pieces are actually really beautifully figured. It's kind of crotch wood and it's there's there's weird things going on usually around these areas but in typical woodworking or even turning it's really hard to use some of this stuff because there's just not enough material or it's fragile you know it's cracking and it may just blow up on the lathe so uh, by stabilizing this kind of thing and then you know pouring resin around it uh, you've definitely stabilized it enough it's not going to come flying apart it shouldn't anyway and it's adding color to these voids so you get really dramatic results uh, here's a piece of uh, walnut I think this is kind of a crotch area or you know where, where a branch was coming in and you got this kind of void where there's junk stuff going on in there now I usually try and clean those types of things out stabilize it and then uh, you know cast it I just dump it in a mold uh, but it allows you to use some really cool stuff another one is pine cones Usually anything where there's voids, there's there's holes missing, you know, where there's air, uh, you know, between the material, that's the kind of stuff that is going to look awesome once you've cast it because you're going to add color to those voids. Uh, and then when you turn it back, it just kind of turns into something cool. So, uh, you know, get out there and find some random materials. Uh, I know uh, Banksia pods. Uh, I don't even know what that is. It's some kind of like a pine cone type thing, but it's got holes in it and it's uh, I think in the middle there's it's hollow and then there's holes going through it. Those turn out really awesome. Uh, another one is uh, I just forgot what I was going to say. Um, the ch Choya cactus. It's like I guess it's the stalk of a cactus plant and it's kind of got voids in it similar to the Banksia pods or any of that stuff and when you cast resin especially colored and really cool colors in there it turns out fabulous once you turn it back so uh, get out there and try some different materials uh, I'm gonna come back when I have this thing ready and we're gonna turn it and I'll show you what kind of stuff I can make once I've poured some resin around this alright so uh, we got the the blanks out of the pressure pot and they're pretty interesting this mountain mahogany is actually I gotta be honest it's probably a little bit uh, nicer looking or I don't know I just it's it's a better piece of wood uh, as compared to the sagebrush sagebrush is pretty gnarly stuff um, and and this stuff really looks good in these uh, castings but anyway so we got some different uh, blanks uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn one of them now I, I like doing this between center turning uh, this is just kind of a side note um, I got these bushings that fit into a 60 degree uh, cone. I got a dead center and a live center and frankly you can't get a better more accurate uh, turning uh, than, than that and uh, a lot of people think that like frankly I don't even care if it's round <laughs> when I'm turning it that's not even really the big deal finishing if you're not turning this thing if it's not you know tr running true if there's a little bit of wobble to it when you sand uh, in between coats or anything like that or when you're polishing the, the CA glue or whatever kind of finish you're gonna burn through certain edges and I always wondered why it would be thin and I would get that burn through and the problem is it's not running true uh, those mandrels really suck uh, and they just there's they can introduce some wobble and they can be off and the bushings uh, stacking up a bunch of bushings um, the more bushings you stack up on that for the, especially for the slim lines and stuff the more error you're going to get. So, uh, if you do one blank at a time, turn it between centers, it has to run dead true. I mean, it, it's it's going to be the most accurate way to do it. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox here. But uh, I'm going to turn up this mountain mahogany, and I and I'm trying. To, I was trying to go for black. Um, I don't know how black it's going to be. We'll see. But uh, I just wanted to kind of turn this up so you can see what kind of results you'll get uh, mixing the the you know wood or, or junk wood or you know whatever uh, with the Illumilite so I'll pull the GoPro up and we'll get this uh, kind of couple shots of the turning and then uh, 
I'll show you the finished pen so you can uh, figure out what, what to expect when you're mixing acrylic with wood. I got it all assembled and uh, this mountain mahogany and the way that I poured it actually turned out awesome. I put a little bit of silver, I don't know, they call it, I don't know what they call it, but it's one of the aluminite powders. Put some silver in there and it's got a little bit of silver kind of swirl here and there. And uh, this mountain mahogany is really awesome. It's got lighter and darker color in it and it worked out great. You know, having it, eh, you probably can't even see this, but there's you know different bands of uh, the alumilite filling certain areas and uh, this actually did turn out black I wasn't certain it's hard to tell off the pour but you know mixing it in there there's actually parts where the darker Mah mountain mahogany wood it was kind of it must have been crackled up and when I turned it back it, it's kind of it almost looks like it's on fire or something so you get really cool results you know it, adding wood that's that's got curves to it and, and different stuff and filling those voids with uh, alumilite or you know any kind of resin it doesn't matter what you use uh, I, I, I personally like alumilite but I, I don't really care what you use polyester resin works great epoxy works great all of these things work good the point is uh, you know mixing the two resin of any kind and wood gives you really awesome results with pens and it's it's highly unique you know you can get a piece of walnut turn it and make a pen out of it and it's gonna look like any walnut pen uh, when you mix something like mountain mahogany which is kinda of weird in the first place and then throw in bands of color there is absolutely no one else in the world uh, that's gonna be able to make this pen and frankly I won't even be able to make this pen again uh, just because of the unique nature of it. So uh, get out there, try wood with resin, and uh, if you have any questions, definitely you know leave comments or you know leave questions in the comments below. Uh, you can email me at zach at nvwoodworks.com, and uh, if you do try this out, you know send me pictures. Let me know uh, if you have videos or if you have photos. Uh, shoot a link to me, and I'll I'll check it out. I always love seeing what other people are doing. You know I I kind of do my own thing in my shop but it's it's really cool to get different ideas and just see what other people are doing so if you like this video and you want to see more of them uh, definitely subscribe to the channel it'll let you know when new ones come out and uh, other than that definitely leave a comment I always like hearing what people have to say about my videos uh, if you have any suggestions for me definitely let me know and uh, other than that I will see you in the next video <laughs>